world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live edition of the Walker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, right? That's that's what you're watching or listening to? Let me check. Yep, yep, that's the case. This is what you should be watching or, or listening to. Do you subscribe to the podcast? Did you know that this is a podcast? Yeah. Well, the Locker Gnome Daily Report is TLDR for short, your daily dose of geek news reviews. And answers that you can use. Like an answer to the question, Chris, are you ever going to talk about Windows 10 again? See how I threw that word in there again? Because I've talked about it before. Yeah, uh, I may get to it today. But it's my intention that tomorrow's CPU episode is pretty much going to be my dad using Windows 10 for the first time. I'm going to record it here in my workshop. Uh, and it, it'll be CPU. Uh, and of course, the Supernomies will be able to tune in behind the scenes to get some context or another point of view. Uh, but the video we're going to do, or how it's going to be done for the CPU perspective is, you know, from my angle, I'm going to be shooting down from my dad's shoulder, kind of over his shoulder, uh, to kind of get a, a, a view from where he sits. So it'll be slightly different from the way that we did the, uh, how real users will use Windows 8 or whatever I titled that video. I think the uh, the hope is that uh, Microsoft will see that they're on the right path. I think Dad will not notice the same things that I've noticed about the Windows 10 technical preview, and it is a technical preview. I've got to throw that in there. That's very important. Uh, I hope to get to some of my thoughts um, today, but I've got a few other things that I'd like to cover as well, including mentioning that Citrix is once again supporting the things that we're doing, as well as the Supernomies. Citrix GoToAssist offers a secure cloud-based solution for IT and customer support professionals, you may be one, to provide live and unattended remote support to their employees and customers working from any computer or mobile device. For a 30-day free trial, visit GoToAssist.com. And by the way, they're also very active on social. I'm very happy to see them acting uh, with um, due speed on anything that uh, the community might be experiencing because they have an arrays, a raising. I just made up a word, an amazing array of tools. It's a raising. It's, that's amazing array, a raising. It's the Chris Perillo drinking game. Everybody take a drink. Mm. This is fine water. Ah, straight from the fridge. So another thing that I wanted to explain to everybody today is that you should have fun. Why? Because it's fun at work day, which is pretty much every day around here. We try to have fun, we being me, and hopefully you do as well. Have fun! If you can't have fun at work, it's work. Who wants to work? I'm working right now. Gotta check here. Yep, this should be the date. January's just flown by. 28th of January. This is fun! What's your calendar like? Is your calendar just like boring with squares and stuff? Why wouldn't you want a cubed calendar? It's like three times as good. Because it's cubed. <laughs> Can you believe it? Chris Perillo made a math joke. <laughs> I thought it was funny. Well, I am going to have fun at work today. Uh, we tweeted out a few things that we thought were kind of fun to bring into your workplace. If you work with other people, uh, or you may work remotely, you should still have fun at work, no matter where or how or when you work. Uh, got a few ideas for you, as we shared on LockerGnome.com, as well as in our Twitter accounts. Hopefully you're following us there. And on Snapchat, too. Uh, did I post anything fun on Snapchat yet? No. Oh, hang on. I'll do this right now. Give me a second. You gotta see this. They just updated Snapchat yesterday. If not yesterday, then the day before. This is, you know, amazingly outstanding, awesome. This is so cool. Uh, give me a second. Got to launch it here. Uh, if you're viewing me right now on your mobile device, this may not work as well. Okay, if you're viewing me on a traditional computer, like a big screen, it will work better. You've got to use your mobile device that has Snapchat. Open up your Snapchat app. Open up the camera. Look at this. Oh, that's too bright. <laughs> Don't, don't stare directly at the bright Snapchat icon. Let me go ahead and lower the brightness a bit. Okay, there. This should work. Okay, this Snapchat... Ah, I'm trying to set up on the table just the right way. My elbow slipped. If you snap a picture of this icon with your Snapchat app, with the camera app, um, you can't obviously do it. If you're watching this video on your mobile device, it's not going to work. But if you're watching it on a TV or a monitor, it should work. I'll give you a few more seconds. This is pretty much likely going to be the only Snapchat app, or yes, the only app I'm absolutely going to use for sure. Uh, no third-party clients for me, thank you very much. Um, 
This is likely going to be the only Snapchat account that we plan on using. Uh, the username is Perillo Vlogs. The S at the end. I had Perillo Vlog. We used that briefly, but I, I really wanted to go with Vlogs as an account name, so it's Perillo Vlogs. And you can use the app to uh, follow from there. So let me go ahead and Snapchat something that I have here. This is kind of fun. Give me, hey Pixie, you want to Snapchat with? Okay, you, everybody, you get to see Pixie in this Snapchat right now. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the Snapchat app. There we go. Gonna have fun at work. It's fun at work day. Hey Pixie, it's fun at work day. So to celebrate, Noonie, you know that's my mom, also known as Jedi's grandmother, got me some Darth Vader macaroni and cheese. It's over here. And so, okay, I'm recording this video. Uh, I'm going to post it to my story so everybody can see it. And there we go. All right. Uh, I've got other things, too, in, in my story. I've got a few things in my story. I've got a long story today. It's kind of fun. So I, I, I'm going to put this in the vlog, of course, in, in a different scene. Uh, and yes, I finally got it. For those who were paying attention to the vlog, uh, you knew. I think it was Vlog 1000 I talked about this being a possibility. Uh, someone had tweeted a, a picture of this, a Darth Vader... The themed macaroni and cheese. It's actually Star Wars noodle shapes. And if you know me, not to be confused with all of you who are my nomies, you know that I don't really like macaroni at all. I, I don't mind these pasta shapes. Uh, I don't like macaroni and cheese. I don't like the, the flavor of cheese that they use. So I'm planning on buying a few other boxes uh, and, and then trying the pasta shapes in, you know, another mixture of sauces that Diana puts together. Oh, by the way, collectible boxes. One of eight right here. Look at that. One of eight. Not to be confused with seven of nine. Oh! Did you hear that? Oh my god, yeah. One of eight. Not to be confused with seven of nine. That's right. I just made a total Star Wars Star Trek crossover joke. That I think flew over everybody's head unless your name is Cassie Lowe. I'm going to go ahead and put this over here. Love the back of this box. Love the front of the box. Uh, and they have, of course, other characters as well. So, uh, even though I never plan on eating the macaroni and cheese, I do plan on keeping that box. It's collectible. What am I going to, uh, what else am I going to do? Uh, we're also going to have fun next week. I plan on doing a CPU video, Star Wars themed breakfast, how to have a Star Wars breakfast. Part of it is making Star Wars themed pancakes. And we've got uh, another idea of what we can use these uh, shapes for. They also make uh, uh, like character shapes, but they were so expensive. These were like 10 bucks. So we got them. I look forward to that CPU video next week. How I would say that you could have a Star Wars themed breakfast. And uh, another, you want another spoiler alert? Look at this. Darth Vader themed uh, melanin plates. Is that what they call them? Mel melanin? Is that the, the, it's plastic, but it's a certain type of plastic. Lovely, found them, uh, six of them, at a pretty affordable uh, price. Uh, brand new, so you'll expect to see things served up on that. Darth Vader jelly beans, jelly belly, uh, a, a collectible case. It's not really a tin, it's a plastic, or not, this is pla this part's plastic here on the back. Uh, this is uh, simple cardboard, but Darth Vader's on it, so of course I had to have it. And then, what would a fun day be without another Lego set? I got this at what, 35% off? I tweeted it the other day. As soon as I saw this discount uh, on Amazon, I said, hey dude, 30% off? What was it? It's the uh, set number 70163, uh, Toxic, 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 Toxic Meltdown, 429 pieces, 30% uh, off. So, of course, when I see a discount, oh, and for, for those of you wondering, what does this have to do with, oh, there we go, there's some tech for you, Google Play, App Store enabled right there. Free app if you want it. Well, of course, not my free app. I get to keep the bricks. So uh, you should be following the things that I'm doing on social because I'm always talking about uh, discounts that I find. There you go. You could have saved 30%. I did. It was good. So uh, have we had enough fun yet? Are, are we ready to move on? Okay, maybe uh, the idea of fun for you is finding a 16% discount on a solar charge external battery. Would you, would you like, a, like you know, something that you'd plug into a device? You know, let's say you needed to charge your phone or your tablet. You could use the Zero Lemon 20,000 milliamp hour solar charge external battery. 16% off if you want. We also have a WordPress beginner course for free and a pay what you want back end developer course bundle. Name your own price on that. So there you go. A discount on something, a free something, and a name your own price on something. All of which are at deals.lockernome.com. And by the way, if you didn't notice... We rebooted store.lockernome.com for geeky stuff, also known as shop.lockernome.com for a redirect. We've got cardboard cutouts, 
hoodies, other things that you might want to have on you or with you or around you at any point in time. Again, shop.lockernome.com. And I think we even have the Super Nomies discount available for those of you who are Super Nomies in case you wanted to save more money with us. So this is a, an interesting a bit of news that a few of you tweeted me this morning. Sorry, it's just the way this happened. No, sorry, not sorry. Uh, the Boba Fett figure apparently sold for 18,000 pounds at auction. I tweeted this out, and I thought it was a rather fantastic bit of news because the person who bought this eons ago bought it for a couple bucks. There's a new TV show coming out called Toy Hunter. And or I think it's a TV show. Maybe it's an internet-only show. And they had uh, the host basically giving tips. And he was suggesting, you know, keep things in the box, keep things in good condition. And ultimately, shared the same tip that I would share for people who wanted to collect. Start with what you love. Collect what you love. Because if you don't love what you collect, what's the point? You got to love it. And hopefully you do love the things that you collect. I really do hope you do uh, love the things that you collect. But... One of the things he even went uh, further to say, because people ask, well, what's the, the best thing to collect? Uh, he mentioned Star Wars. Like, yeah, way ahead of you, dude. Way, psh, this is where I am. Like, this is where the Toy Hunter is. This is where I am. He's way ahead of me. But I'm saying that I'm way ahead of other people. So it's good to know that I think along uh, in the same way that uh, uh, Toy Hunters think like. I don't know. The way I look at it is this phone, eh, it's going to be worth something still kind of someday. But the other things that I might have could be worth a fair amount more. Trust me, ask a collector. Big difference between uh, technology, which you use as a tool, and a collectible. There's big differences there. And it's okay to, to have both of them around you. And I'm okay with that, too. That's the way I, I choose to look at it. Uh, some interesting bit of news uh, to come out of Microsoft's camp. The dream of a Windows Phone platform on tablets is uh, pretty much almost coming true. Now, I caught this news independent of Earl Green sending it to me, but Earl, you did uh, send me the link to the Ars Technica article the, detailing it. Effectively, what Microsoft's going to do with uh, Windows 10 is uh, do this, even though I, it's not exactly what they're going to do. If you buy a computer, a tablet, let's say, that is uh, at a certain size, that is not large or, you know, something like the Surface PC... I just, just, yeah, I know, I disconnected the keyboard. All right, let me go ahead and show people what I got here to prove that I am running on Windows 10, the technical preview. The password is incorrect. It is? I, okay, well, maybe not. Um, I didn't change my password. Okay, I can try it again. The password is incorrect. Okie dokie. Apparently, the password that I set up doesn't work. <laughs> Can I try it one more time? <laughs> I know the password that I set up. It seems that I will have to uh, reset the password in order to get back into the computer there. I know what I did. Okay, can I, I'm going to try one more thing. Maybe I did it this way? Uh, no, I swear to God that's how I did it. This is horrible. I, I don't... What did I do? Now I'm stymied. I forgot... Oh, I got in. I remembered. I My user... Pebcac! Total Pebcac! Without a... a, a, a Pebcac. I, I got in. I, I forgot. It was the other password that I used when this had Windows 8 on it. But this no longer has Windows 8 on it. Now, on with the show! So... Effectively, if you have a version of Windows 10 on a device that I think, I want to say, 8 inches or smaller, you will not have the option to jump directly to the Windows 10 desktop. It was logging in. And... Do I have to log in again? Fall asleep. There we go. The password's in. Dude. It was even saying welcome. Okay, never mind. Windows 10 doesn't like me. Oh, that's going to be fun. So, uh, <clears throat> if you have a version of Windows 10 on a device that isn't very large, like in terms of the screen size, you won't be able to get into the traditional desktop, which is fine. So it'll be like Windows Phone, no desktop. And I think that's actually going to create a decent Windows experience. Some people want the desktop on Windows. On a traditional computer, I understand, but a new type of computer... Yeah, not so much. I'm really not, uh, you know, inclined to want the desktop, even on the Surface PC. I'd rather just have the touchscreen experience, the modern apps, never having to see the desktop at all. So I think that's 
a good decision for Microsoft to make. I think it's going to help Windows usability. Uh, hopefully not going to confuse a lot of users because I think what it may do too is kind of hurt Microsoft in the same way that they were hurt by Windows RT or Windows for Surface RT or the RT platform in general, which by the way, I think they discontinued pretty much every single RT computer, including the Surface 2, not the Surface Pro 2, the Surface 2, which I think was one of the last uh, RT machines from Microsoft. Um, it just didn't do very well because a lot of people wanted the traditional desktop with Windows. So if anything's going to hurt Microsoft in that sense, it's not the, the reason that they're turning off the desktop in devices that you know, are really only not very large, really only not very large. Um, they're doing it for a good reason. And I, I hope that consumers are able to pick up on what Microsoft's laying down with that. I think it's the right way to do it. I think the desktop is not really a thing to have on a touchscreen device. Just going to say it. And that problem with desktop usability on a touchscreen device that doesn't have a very large screen, it's only exacerbated. Does that make sense? So it's easier to use a desktop if you have a, a bigger, you know, space and if you can attach a keyboard than it is to attach a keyboard to a smaller screen, even if you could. It's just not as usable. Just never was. Even netbooks, to a large degree, weren't that usable because the desktop was like that big. It was horrible as far as usability was concerned. So uh, I would have wanted to talk about Windows 10 today, but apparently I can't. Well, luckily, I didn't do anything with it. I just, I set it up. It's all I did. And, and used it, briefly. <laughs> Thank God I didn't plan on doing much else with it today. Uh, I was talking about telepathy and video games yesterday in TLDR. Fascinating topic. Fascinating reads. Earl Green also sent me this link, uh, talking about the secret to immortality. It is possible for certain parts of our brain to be replicated. And I, it is just a matter of time, not if, but when, we're going to be able to take everything that we have, these memories, what we have in our brain, and replicate them. Right now, it could probably be done, but in a destructive fashion. Uh, it's going to be very interesting in 100 years' time, because I think in 100 years, it's going to be practical. I won't be around. I think my brain will be long gone before it's a possibility, which is kind of sad. I would like to you know, live on forever in light or something that would allow me to eschew my mortal boundaries that I currently have. You know, I'm in this body. I'm attached to this body. But what's the spirit? Where does the spirit live? Where do all these memories live? You know, they're stored here this in this computer inside my head. It's just a matter of time before we crack that code. So another fascinating read here, The Secret to Immortality. Would you, if you could, if you could, move. Because imagine replicating. And there's, are there two of you? Is that another spirit? What's, what's going on? How does consciousness work? Would you move your, your, your entire existence to digital bits? Would you do it? I would. Oh, absolutely. In a heartbeat. For sure. No doubt in my mind. That'd be pretty neat. I, I don't know how it would work necessarily, but uh, hey, it's not for me to figure out science. Let the scientists figure it out. Uh, fast, another fascinating read. If you read nothing else today, that would probably be the thing I would encourage you to read. Amazon is set to launch an email service called Workmail, uh, and this is going to be coming in Q2, so a few months down the road. They're uh, specifically aiming their sites at Google and likely Microsoft. Uh, they've got a calendar system a part of, of this, but, you know, I'd have to see it, but... Amazon and, well, with enterprise stuff, they've done very, very well. But for consumer stuff, mm, I'm not so sure I'm sold on, on Amazon there. I do not think that people are going to be moving in droves away from, let's say, Gmail. They're happy with Gmail or their current uh, email provider. So it's nice to have competition. Uh, it, it will likely be aimed towards the professional users uh, or you know those who are in enterprise or in business uh, rather than the average person. If you're getting a free email account, they're probably not aiming the service towards you. At that uh, point, I think tying it into Amazon's uh, cloud services, I, I think is a step in the right direction. It's just another service to complement their other services uh, and it could work. It could work well. It could work better than anything we've seen before. 
nobody knows. We really haven't seen it yet, but uh, it's just something to keep your eye out for if you've been looking for a Google Apps alternative, if that's what you choose to use, or maybe email from another provider altogether. By way of patron Earl Green, again, another email link, or another link emailed to me, something called, uh, eh, hang on, what is it again? Am I going down? I downloaded this app. <laughs> so fun. Am I going down? I know that sounds really weird, but basically what you do is you set up your departure airport, your destination airport here. I'll hold it up here. Am I going down? And then what you do is you plug in your flight number and flight information. And what it'll do is it'll calculate against the database of known planes, uh, cities, airports, uh, all these factors, like a million different flights and combinations of the past 10 years and tell you the probability of your plane going down. So this to me is a pretty neat uh, little app, 99 cents. I ended up getting it for free. You could too. You can get the redeem code, uh, earn free apps, go.tagjag.com slash free points. Use the link. You can earn free apps. No, no, uh, the developer still got 99 cents. It's just that someone else paid for it. So, uh, if you travel frequently and I, I, you know, I've got this morbid curiosity, like I've been on certain plane rides where I've white knuckled the whole way. It would have been nice to know statistically what the chances would be. Now, if, this is the problem. If I get on a flight and I, I plug in the information and I'm in the red, oh man, what am I going to do, right? You want to be in the green, I think. You want green, not red. Now, I don't know. I, 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 I would hesitate to be on a flight and check the information. I'd almost want to check ahead of time. But, you know, this could allay a lot of concerns. That, that you know, it's a fear. It is, it is, is it a legitimate fear? Absolutely. Can it happen? Yes. The probability of it happening, you know, the odds are very high, uh, but not low. This app could put a finer point on it. 99 cents. You can earn it for free. Again, using go.tagjag.com slash free points. Pay for it if you want. I've got both links for you in the video description. YouTube is pretty much getting rid of Flash. Bravo. Long overdue. YouTube's going HTML5 outright. Now, in case you love Flash, you may be in a minority. Uh, thank you, YouTube. I hope other sites begin to follow suit. I know when my uh, uh, my web browser is on a page that has Flash on it because my fan starts going to cool it down. CPU. Hog. Ugh. Bleh. Flash. Mm. Good back then. Not so much good today. So uh, YouTube has pretty much gotten rid of Flash. It's gone straight HTML5, and I think your computer will thank you for it as well. Uh, if you noticed the difference, I would be surprised. Some people might have noticed the difference. I did not. Uh, you know, I've got a couple other things I, I wanted to cover today uh, before I let everybody go. I, I did want to spend some time talking about the, uh, the Windows 10, but obviously couldn't get very far there. Uh, Carlos Can Cook, that's his handle on Twitter, I believe, uh, sent this. It's a PSP case. Nice, huh? Because it's got Darth Vader on it. Going to keep it in the packaging. I have the Darth Vader PSP. There was a, a Darth Vader-themed PSP at one point. I no longer have a PSP, but I, I sold it for like a couple bucks. Oh, I'm kicking myself for that uh, because I wasn't using the PSP anymore. And that was before I really kicked off my Darth Vader collectibles collection. So I'm going to keep this in the packaging. Obviously, a case within a case. Ad infinitum. Thank you, Carlos. I do appreciate this very much. Uh, I never had this at all. I had the uh, Darth Vader-themed PSP itself. Ah, the PSP. Man, that was an amazing platform back in the day. Nowadays, uh, I don't know. I think mobile gaming's kind of lost its mojo unless it's, it's tied into Android or, or potentially iOS. Hmm. Those are my feelings. Of course, uh, me, those are my feelings. Nintendo feels differently, naturally. Uh, they, I, I guess, I, I think they finally showed some amount of not losing so much money, but they also, like, slashed their estimates in half. So, you know, they're attenuating the excitement around the future of Nintendo. I hope uh, that at some point Nintendo licenses its video games or its characters to other platforms. It would be nice. Until then, we just have to live in the world of Nintendo as Nintendo has set it up. Uh, Jan Stote... Okay, Jan, if that's how you say your name, you said I didn't do very well with your last name, but I did better than your professors. I got your card today. Thank you very much. And this is really neat. Uh, uh, a handwritten letter on graph paper. <laughs> I like graph paper. Graph paper's fun. 
I used to love graph paper. You know, at one point in high school, I, I tried to create a, a paper game based on Tetris. Like it, it was like a, a, a turn, a turn-based game, a turn. What do they say? A turn, turn by turn game, turn-based turn play game. Obviously, I'm not a table gamer. Never claimed to be. But I, I figured out a way that you would roll a, a die and uh, you'd roll a random uh, number and uh, you would you get a random piece and then you would have to place it on the board. And it worked. I had the, I had the, I had it figured out. It was a little tedious, but I had it figured out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. Graph paper. That's the last time I, I remember really using graph paper. Not for the thing that it was intended to be used for, but it was, it was fun for me to do. Uh, so thank you uh, for that card and uh, the graph paper message. Uh, I really don't have much else I want to cover because I can't. Can I, can I try it one more time? I'm going to try it one more Just one more. Just give me a... I, just, I can't help but think I'm... I can't be mistyping. And it's not... The keyboard doesn't have a problem. I'm not on a battery. It's it's just... It's, 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 it's definitely not something that... I mean, I forget passwords all the time, and that's a problem, really. Okay, no, okay, that was the wrong password. Is it, like, what the hell is going on? It doesn't like the password. I, dude. Okay, um, should I have not said, did I not, okay, I, I tried, like, no password. It's saying Welcome. Did I not set up a password? No, I remember setting up a password. I remember setting this up and having to confirm it. It's saying welcome, but I, I don't think I did not set up a password. Maybe I need to reboot it. Did you try turning it on and off again? Yeah, I didn't like that either. It just kicked me out. No, it's saying, no. Welcome! No, the password's incorrect. Oh... Windows 10. I, I, I still am going to blame myself. Although I don't think I should blame myself because I'm pretty sure I knew what I did and remember what I did. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Appreciate your support. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and roll on into the patron hangout as I wind down here. I love you. I appreciate you. But at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices. <laughs>